Thanks, everyone. Hi, nice to be here. Um, just while I was watching that last presentation, one of the things that really struck me that Jeremy said was uh, about dropping sugar on top of like our tool set. So I want to basically give you guys a bit of sugar to drop on your sites to make them sweet. So you're going to walk away with really nice websites if you start using this stuff. And people used to say, you know, we try and build lickable web apps, and I never understood it, but now I do. So, okay, so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about CSS filters. This is not the old style filters that used to be in IE a long time ago, but these are the current crop of filters. Okay, so basically this is how a page gets built. Like you start with a tree, right? You lay it out, you style it, you do your CSS, you render it, and you can do things like, say there's got this tree, you know, you might you know, embellish it a bit more, do a bit more styling. And then there's a final stage that you can apply, and this is a CSS filter. And what the filter is, is the second last stage. It's just before you pop the pixel to the screen, you apply a filter. So here I've got this like tree that I've built. If I like apply a filter, I'm going to just like blur it and shift its color a little bit. And it just does that. And that's just before you send it off to the screen. And of course, this is your web browser drawing the beautifully filtered page that you've just built. And of course, it can look sharp. So that's it. That's basically it. I'm finished. Thanks. We've got 12 minutes left. <laughs> OK. So anyway, this is Web Directions code. So this is the code. Um, this is an example of a very, very complicated filter, like with, which has a whole lot of stages. And this is kind of the worst possible case. We've got a couple of prefixed filter things. We've got non-prefixed filter. But of course, you guys who are actually building sites that you know, actually have deadlines and want to build stuff, you don't want to be writing this because it's far too complicated. So let's start with some basic ideas, right? The first thing is that this is built on top of SVG filters. So filters are kind of inherited from SVG into CSS land because when SVG had them, they were really clunky and complicated to use. So you can imagine an SVG filter is like a Lego block. And a CSS filter is like, you know, the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> like it's just, you know, all put together nicely so it's really simple to use. So let's just take a look. Okay, here's some code and an image, right? So it's that simple. You just have a class there, like you know, blur me, and it's basically if we apply the class to the image, it says you know, blur it by four pixels, and you end up with this thing on the right that looks just fantastic. Couldn't be easier. The beauty of this, of course, is that if your browser just happens to not support CSS filters, it'll gracefully degrade, and you just won't get the blur. So in general, it's kind of it's just an embellishment. It's like a bit of sugar to make your site look nicer. So. The way filters work, that was kind of an example of one filter. Now there are a bunch of different preset filters in CSS filters, and they combine left to right. So you can list a whole lot of them one after the other. And so your original pixel, pixelated image will get one filter applied, then the next one, then the next one. So as you can see here, I've spun around the hue 180 degrees and then applied sepia. So the final filter, the final image, looks like sepia. But of course, if you swap those two around, you get a completely different result. So you're actually doing the sepia first, and then you're hue rotating the sepia. So it gives you a different color. Okay, so order is very important. Okay, so um, the CSS shorthands, as I said before, were just a way to like package up the SVG filters, apply them to your content without you having to do all sorts of nasty XML and namespaces and all these sort of things. Um, now what's happening, of course, in all the browsers, people are shifting the, the filter workload onto the GPU. So once these are kind of pre canned effects, like blur, for example, works a lot better on a GPU than it runs on a CPU. And so this is something everybody developing sites needs to keep in mind, that performance of filters, especially on mobile sites, varies greatly. So test a lot. As we say, nothing ever comes for free. So um, this is a very geeky slide here. I have to apologize for the deferred rendering limits complexity that will not work bullet point. That's probably everybody's looking at this going, what? <laughs> OK, what I, I'll just explain this quickly for the super geeks who want to know what this means. Um, on a standard GPU, on, on like your desktop workstation or something, there are thousands of parallel cores that can split the job out to all these parallel cores in parallel. So for something like a blur, you might do 10,000 operations in parallel, and that's the key to the GPU speed. On a mobile device, like your, you know, your Android phone or your iPhone or whatever, they have a completely different style of GPU, and that GPU buffers up commands and kind of tries to do as little work as it can before it actually does the final render. Uh, the downside of this is that it uses more memory on the GPU. And so if you do start doing crazy things with harder accelerated filters on a mobile device, you'll probably run out of RAM. And the, you know, your site will crash, and people won't be very happy. 
Okay, so I'm just going to dive into the future. That was the past. We're just going to dive into the very near future, which is happening now. There's this thing that Adobe's been heavily pushing, and um, a lot of the web browser makers are keen to hear about, and they're called custom filters. Um, now, what a custom filter is, is does anyone know what WebGL is? Put your hand up. Yes. All right. <laughs> okay. So WebGL is a way to um, basically, you know, do 3D stuff, do vertex and fragment shaders, and do funky-looking sites, and that's, that's great if you're writing a game. But if you've got web content and you want to manipulate the web content, it's not really all that useful. So um, filter effects, the current filter effects are pixel-based things. Then we have the, the custom filters, which are shaders. And shaders is a kind of a 3D concept, a GPU concept that doesn't map very well to the real world. But let's just have a pic see if I've got a picture to explain it. OK, so what you've got here is here you have like real web content. So there's like text and an, you know, an image. This is actually an SVG file. Um, and so what happens with custom filters is you can actually get your render of your DOM and manipulate it like you would a 3D scene with WebGL. So instead of you know, all JavaScript doing a game, you can actually like lay out your site, and you can do something like a page flip or a page turn or you know, other kind of funky effects. And that's what these are about. So let's just have a little look at what that would really look like. OK, so here is a um, shader effectively working. So this is, this is basically an SVG file that's been sliced up. And if you see all these triangles, the, what happens is the vertex shader is the thing that moves the positions of the corners of the triangles. So you basically slice up your web page. Some guy, some geek writes a bit of you know, shader code, passes it to the CSS custom filter, and this thing goes flickering around and doing all these funky things, which is you know, very, very cool. I think you know, people like Flipboard could probably use this to do their trademark flip, or I've seen it used for page turning. I've seen all sorts of crazy applications of this stuff. OK, so let's just go back to reality for a moment, and this is kind of the last thing I really want to talk about is accelerated SVG filters. Now, as I said before, uh, all this filter stuff started, you know, the, started its infancy in SVG. It kind of climbed up the tree, got chucked into CSS, got mashed together. Um, and then, of course, SVG became the poor cousin of CSS filters because everybody was sitting there jumping on the CSS bandwagon, and SVG was you know, left crawling along behind. But of course, geeks being geeks have been working really hard, and they've been working on accelerating SVG filters. And the whole purpose of this is to be able to actually make super complicated filters that do anything, because the building blocks, like the Lego blocks of SVG filters, let you chain crazy things together, and you can do some really crazy things if you have the time. So um, why don't we have a look at a bit more code? So it's very simple to use. SVG filters from CSS. So what you actually have is you have a filter, URL, bracket, ID. And so we have, for example, here we have like a video. We're going to apply a convolution filter to the video. So the CSS is just that little tiny block at the top. Um, and down the bottom, you can see the, the horrible XML, which is actually the conv convolution filter. And there's a convolution and blur filter here as well. And so if you know somebody that can write the, the bits of the meat of the filter. You can actually just call it from CSS. And it does magical things, as I will show you. So let's just have a look. Now, this is a video. This is running in Canary. And this is today. This is not a demo. This is actually real. So we can apply a blur to the live video. And it works well. In fact, we can apply point light. And I put it like a. a a listener on the mouse move event, as you can see, I can actually shift the light. So this is real time running on the GPU, shifting the light over this live video scene. Uh, similarly, you can do lots of other nice SVG effects, like spotlight. So it's like doing a little glow in a spotlight. So these are the kind of effects that you would see in a game, like with WebGL. You know, people do lighting, they do models. But this is now on web content, and this is on live video. Morphology is just another SVG primitive. Um, inverse, flip the colors around, which I don't know how useful that is, but it works. Now, convolution. Now, with convolution, you can do all sorts of crazy things. Convolution is a mathematical concept of a couple of functions interfering with each other. But it basically lets you make almost anything you like. You can do edge detection. You can do crazy things. So we can do a convolution with a blur. Um, and offset is another one. Now, this is where it's just basically taking the video and offsetting it and blurring it. Um, 
change it to black and white if you want to have a bit of nostalgia. <laughs> or if you want to think you're in like a, you know, a cartoony noir movie, you can do that. Works better with people. Um, blue fill is just kind of, you know, doing a chroma key-ish kind of effect. Um, now, displacement's an e interesting one. What you can actually do is you can take an image, um, a RGB image, and you can use one of the channels of that image to be a pixel offset for the thing that you're looking at. So when you apply that filter on top of something else, it actually morphs it in a whole different direction. Um, this has been used for a lot of effects. Like people with Macs, you know, when you close your window down, the whole window kind of goes and swings, goes down. That's, that's a warp, and that's the kind of thing you can do with the displacement filter. Um, blur, of course, we've seen blur, but it's, there we go. So that's pretty much all I really wanted to show you. Um, so you guys, get some sugar, throw it on your site. People will run there. They'll want to lick it. They'll go, this is unreal. This makes my site so sweet. And if you happen to hit that site on a bra with a browser that doesn't support the CSS filters, well, it'll fall back gracefully, and it'll still work, right? So in any case, thank you for listening to me. And um, if you want to find out more, I'll be around the next couple of days. Come and talk to me.